how can we actually control the number of loops that we have in here? There's a few ways of doing it. One, count them. See how many times you want to do something. Another one, interactive. Ask the user, hey, you want to continue? The user says, yes, you do it. Otherwise, you don't. So to actually count it, it's very simple. I already talked to you about it when we were, is that a question? OK. Um, I already talked about it with, with you when we were talking about expressions. And I said how uh, a computer expression is different with a math expression. And I said, assignment over here doesn't tell you the equality. It's setting. Remember that? So we use that feature. So what we do, we create a, we create a counter. I'm going to say int cnt, a counter. And I either initialize or set it to 0. I start counting from 0. Now, how many times I want this thing to happen? Say five times, right? So I'm going to say cnt being less than 5. So while C and T is less than 5, print this. And as soon as I print that, I'm going to say add 1 to C and T using this. So what happens, C and T is 0, right? It comes in, prints it. First right side of the operation is going to happen. C and T becomes 0 plus 1. So C and T becomes 1. Goes up, again checks. Is 1 less than 5? Yes. Prints it, comes over here. Now C and T is 1 plus 1. It becomes 2. Comes up, checks 2 less than 5. Yes. Comes down, 2 plus 1, 3. Now C and T is 3. Goes up, 3 less than 5. Yes. Comes down, prints 3 plus 1, 4. 4 goes up, 4 less than 5. Yes. Comes down, prints it. 4 plus 1, 5. C and T becomes 5. Goes up is, yes, is 5 less than 5, false, breaks and goes out. All right? Yes? This is the counting mechanism. This makes it 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, program understands that it's less than five, and it understands forever. So you're going to have always C and T zero less than five, and you're going to have the exact same scenario you had before, which means the condition always remains zero less than five, and it's a true condition. So you're going to have endless amount of these things happening. You have to make the condition wrong after a while. As a, as a result, you keep counting. You add one to it until it hits the condition and it stops. Therefore, it stops the execution. Yes, sir? From my own curiosity, could you make it that the input a number saying, assuming the whole situation of How many times you want to do that? No. Hmm. Um, they put a number to say, like, how many guys are coming with us, and then that includes, and then count being basically the capacity of the, yeah. of the thing. Could you make it that way? So oh, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Instead of adding one, it would add the amount that it would be? Oh, so yes, of course. That's a beautiful thing. So let's do this first, and then I'm going to change it to what you did. OK? So yes, sir. Can we make that CMT plus plus? No. Yes, we can. But I, I don't give you the shorthand. You go find out how, how many other ways you can do it. OK? Yeah, you can do CMT plus plus. That's very right. Yeah. yeah. Or you can, we can say CMT plus equal one. Yeah. Same thing. So you can eat a sandwich. You can eat a sandwich. You can, eat, you can eat the sandwich in five different ways, right? So it's all your choice how to eat the sandwich. I'm not going to tell you how, OK? Of course, when I'm going to tell you the most efficient way, the, most short, sh the shortest way you can write, then yeah, we could do go with it. Uh, f uh, p plus plus essentially gets translated to this. But plus plus is a very tricky, tricksy expression that we have to learn first, OK? All right, so now if I walk, by the way, walking through this, how do we walk through? I'm not, I'm not going to make five. I'm just going to show you how walkthroughs are done. I'm going to make it three now because I want to show you how walkthroughs are done. When I walk through, it essentially means debugging, which means you literally 
walk through execution as if you're a computer to see if something works properly. That's what we call a walkthrough. And you get walkthroughs in your tests, in your quizzes, and then after that in your life, because somebody's going to give you a piece of code, it doesn't work. You have to walk through the code, trace it to see how it works. This is how we do it. I'm going to use this mouse and try to draw, draw it. My apologies. I don't have a touch screen. Okay? I'm going to show this video to my boss. Why do I need a touch screen? Anyways, so, so, so what you do, you draw a table. Okay? Okay? This is for function main. You know what she's going to say? You are doing just fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's function main. And then you write in function main how many variables you have. In this case, we have only a CNT, right? So in here, I'm going to write CNT. OK. All right. And then I'll draw like this. If I have more, I'll do that. Because CNT is initialized to 0, I put a 0 right over here. That's a 0. OK. So I put a 0 right over there. Then I'll, and then I'm going to have a second part over here. And that second part is going to be called output. OK? So you write output. You write something like this. And then you start walking through. You say, OK, CNT 0, 0. While CNT less than 0 is 0 less than 3. Yes, it is. True, I coming. Welcome to Seneca Bar and Grace. So you write over here. Welcome to Seneca Bar and Grill. I'm not going to write the whole thing. You know I can't, right? And then you put an exclamation mark, OK? And then you put a sign over here like this to indicate there is a blank. There is a space printed over there. So the next one that comes after indicates to me that that's, there is a space over there, all right? And then you're going to say, OK, now CNT is equal to CNT plus 1. First, you're going to calculate this. 0 plus 1 is 1. So CNT will be set to 1. Therefore, you're going to have 1 here. Then you go up. Is, because it's a while loop, you have to go up and check the condition again. So you go back up. Is 1 less than 3? Yes. You come in. You print again. Welcome to... Seneca, bar, and grill. Let's say that's the end of the line. You put an exclamation mark over here, and you put a space. OK? Then you come over here. CNT is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. CNT becomes 2. You write over here 2. Then you go back up. Check the condition. 2 less than 3? Yes, because it's true. It comes in. You type. Welcome to Seneca Bar and Grill, exclamation mark, and the space after. And then you come down over here, 2 plus 1, 3. CNT becomes 3. 3 comes over here. Is 3 less than 3? No, it's not. It comes over here, returns 0, which means you're going to say the function main returned 0. OK? You draw a line, and that's the end of function, and that's what it returns. Where does this thing is, ret where, where this thing is returned to? You write OS. It goes back to operating system. That's how walkthroughs are done. That's how we do walkthrough. So if you have 10 variables, you've got to put 10 variables. One by one, the latest thing is going to go with it so you can decide how the things are done. And then what it returns. Why do I, what is important to me to see where it's returned to? Because it may be returned, like this is main, of course it goes to OS. But if it was a function doing something, then it would have returned to another function, not to OS. And then the story continued. All right? Are we okay down to here? Are we okay? So I'm going to wipe out the drawing. My beautiful art that should be in a museum. Anyways, all right, back in business. Now, why three? I don't know how many people are they, right? So I want to know how many people. As soon as you want to do certain type of calculation, you need a place to hold it. 
counter is counter, right? But this is the one, the, the three that I have over here is the number of times I want to say this, right? To do this, correct? If that's the case, that's what I want to ask. So what do I do? I create my second variable. That second variable will be what? Number of people. You can write actually number of people. I'm lazy. And because I'm lazy, this is what I do. And then I'm going to do number of people in line. Right? Oh, sorry. It's a comment. It doesn't work. But yeah, if you do that, I'll reduce mark. If I do it, meh. All right. Are we OK with this? All right? So then what are we doing? After this, after this, what are we doing? We're going to ask. So now, now in here, I'm going to say, welcome to not that. I don't even know how to cut and paste, man. OK. Now I'm going to say, welcome to Seneca Bar and Grill. And in here, I'm going to say printf. How many guests today? Please correct my, my, my dictation mistakes. Like all the people spoiled by spell checking, I suck at it. OK. Are we OK down to here? All right. Now we can go scanf, read an integer, and put that integer into address of number of people. And as you see, it helps me write the proper name. You see over here, that actually gives me the option. You can actually push the down arrow. It selects it, hit enter, and it writes it so you don't make a mistake. You can actually, that's, that's IntelliSense. It's actually very helpful. All right? And then that one comes over here. And now in here, I'm going to say while CNT is less than number of people, Now I can say printf, welcome, id please, right? And I keep going. Now the story continues after that, whatever I want to do, correct? So yes, there's a question, no? So it is exactly the same thing, but the difference is that now it's knowing how many times it's supposed to be done. When I run the program three years later, it's going to say how many guests today. I'm going to say one. It's going to say welcome ID, please, for one person, right? Because it, the condition goes false right after the first one. Now if I do this and I'm going to say five, then it's going to say five times ID, please, okay? Now, of course, I can actually tell who is going to Give me the ID. So I'm going to say, ID please, guest number. And I put a plus holder. And then I put over here CNT. OK? So what happens every time, so ID please, guest number one. ID please, guest number two. ID please, guest number three. And it keeps going. OK? I give opportunities for those 1% all the time. Sometimes you don't just get it. OK? Remember that. All right? Yes. No. That was the question that the gentleman asked. Who asked? Who asked for me about the address? The gentleman asked over there. I say, when you read, you need to know where. That's where you put address. When you print, you are printing the value. Yes. Half a percent to the thing. But you fixed one. You, so they say you wanted to fix her eyebrow. You blinded her eye. OK? The, so you kind of fixed it, but you made another problem over there. If I, he said that, what did he say? So half a percent. Remember that. OK? So, it, so I'm, I'm going to say how many guests today? I'm going to say three. It's going to say guest number zero, guest number one, guest number two. That's not good, right? But if I made this one, then what would have happened? If I actually ran it like this, how many guests did I say three? It's going to say guest number one and two. 
So I, cr I fix the problem with commenting, but at the other side, it's actually happened twice. Why it happened twice? Because it checks to be less than number of people, right? And therefore, how can I fix that? That's, a, that's one way to do it. I, I said how to fix his solution, not how to fix the, the, the original thing. Yeah, less than or equal. So if, instead of doing that, I can say less than or equal. Now problem is fixed, fixed which means it's going to go one further. So now, so if you told me what we can, why we should make this one zero and make that that one, you would have gotten the one percent, right? All right. So that's one way. If I do this, I actually get it, okay? But in C, I'm telling you. C programmers love to start stuff with zero, OK? Now, let me just save this. Because everything in C language starts with zero. Any sequence that you are counting always starts with zero. I always say, how many fingers? 10, 0, 2, 9, and never 1 to 10. Never. OK? So. <clears throat> I'm saving the wrong thing. OK, wait a minute. OK, so in here I'm going to say 0, 2, while 1 dot C. Now, C programmers like to start from 0, but they say, OK, so that's the case. So it's going to start from, they say, OK, because people don't understand 0, only programmers do, I'm going to show them always one more, which was whose solution? Your solution. So when it's so I'm going to pass CNT plus 1 to get printed. When it's 0, it's going to print 0 plus 1. When it's 1, it's going to print zero pl 1 plus 1. So it always shows one more. Um, let's see. Uh, let's find that oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stupid compiler. OK. Yeah, that always happened. Yeah. Yeah. If they, I had a student say, if the compiler knows there's an error over there, why doesn't it just fix it? OK? So that's something that soon, hopefully, is going to happen. Anyway, um, are we OK down to here? All right. So this one works exactly the same way. This CNT plus 1 has no side effect, which means it's not going to change the value of CNT because the value is not pushed back into anything. It just gets printed. Here is the place that actually modifies the value of CNT. Are we OK with this? Yes. Because CNT is 0. I want it to be 1. All right. uh, this is why. Let's take a look. So if I, if I run this beautiful program of mine three years later, OK? So when it starts over here, it, it comes. Uh, let me just, by the way, whenever something is, is long, uh, a string is long, and you want to break it in two without adding spaces, you can put several strings back to back, and automatically they get merged. So I do this, see? When two strings back to back with no operator between, it merges them into one. So you can always break a string by putting two double quotes and do it like that so we can see what we are doing, OK? So it comes over here. Uh, how many guests today? In here, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say two because I don't want to go too much. Okay, so zero less than two, that's true, comes in. Now CNT is CNT is what? Zero. zero. I want to print one, therefore I add one to it. So together it will be one. So when it prints, instead of zero, it prints guest number one. Do we understand that? Okay. And then it adds one to it and goes up and then comes down and two and it goes up and it ends. Does it actually work with printf? Pardon me? Does printf actually uh, work somehow like parallel plus one? Why it shouldn't work? It's perfect. No, what I'm saying is like printf only, the job is only printing, right? Yes. But it's working on command like one, two, three. Printf's job is to print anything you want. That's why it's called print formatted. So you are telling to printf, print these 
and then print an integer here. That percent is the placeholder. What is going to get printed over here? OK? Now, to show you what I mean, I can make the, I can make the message more comprehensive. So I can say, uh, please, uh, guess number one of how many guests we have. I'm going to put percent D. And for the second one, I'm going to put number of people. So now I'm going to bring it down so we can see what we are doing. You're not confused when I bring it down. You know it's all one line. It doesn't matter. So in here, I'm going to say number of people. So what happens, it says, now when I run this, now when I run this, it's going to say, if I say three, it's going to say one of three, two of three, three of three, right? How does it do it? I have two placeholders. The first one goes here, and the second one goes there. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? Sold, OK? So now that we have done this, 0, 3, while while two. Again, you know I save all these things, so when you look at the video, you can see what was the first thing, and then it became what we have now. Now, now that we have this mechanism, let's bring the other one in and put it in here, the one that asks for age. Remember that? So I'm going to open the file, oh, not save the file, open the file that we had. It was if else two, I believe, wasn't it? Yeah. So welcome to Barringer. How old are you is what we want, right? So I'm going to copy this over here, and that was your question, right? So I'm going to copy that if statement and that message and everything, OK, and come back in here. And instead of having this printed, guest number this and that, I'm going to print that. So it's going to say printf how old you are. Of course, I'm going to need an integer. An integer a is a very bad thing, so I'm going to call it age. And this one I'm going to say age, and this one I'm going to say age. OK, and now we can continue. So now inside that while loop, the if statement is happening, which means every single time it asks you, oh, how old are you? And for each guest is going to do that. If you want, if you want, we could have even bring the guest thingy over here. Where is that thing? Oh, I put, I thought I fixed it. Let me fix the spelling, uh, the thing on this. There you go. So where is while two? Um, so in here, the guest number thing, yeah, I can even bring it over there, copy. I'm going to put the message right before how old are you. Uh, welcome, ID please, guest number, yada, yada, and how old are you, I'm going to ask. That's a redundant thing, I probably uh, can't read. I, I'm asking them to read your, their own ID. Anyways, so uh, welcome. So I'm going to, actually, I'm going to remove the ID. I'm going to say, welcome, guest number, yada, yada, how old are you? And so it's going to work like this now. So how, how many yesterday? I'm going to say three. How old are you? Guest number one of three. The first one is 18 years old, 19 years old. Welcome, what would you like to drink? And the second one is going to be 45. And that's that one. And the third one is going to be 12. Now it's going to say, get out of here. And so it keeps asking over and over and over for the same thing. Yes. Yeah, it's got to say, get out of here and ask the next one. I didn't break the loop in here in any way. So again, think of every single entity that we have over here as a separate module. The program that you see right now is essentially what you need to write at the end of the semester. <laughs> so it's not, we, that but, but uh, by in few weeks, you have to write something. That's not now. 
okay? Just go, th go look through the logic and you'll see it's not that difficult. But what it is in that logic thingy that you write, they're going to show you how many different ifs you can write. You can write ifs, you can write else if, you can write a switch. It's going to show you all those things that decision making, different types of things. You can write a while loop, you can write a do while, you can write a for loop. They are all the same thing. Okay, again, one eating sandwich like this, the other one like that. Yeah. They are all repetition. All loops in C language can be written with a while loop. You don't need the other ones. The other ones are just co com different combination of the same thing. I'm going to give you examples for it uh, right now. But I want to know if anybody has any problem with this down to this point. At this point, take a picture. I want to be in it. But it's okay. But but it's gonna be posted. Okay, so you can take a picture. That's okay. I'm joking. Everybody, that's that's my thing. Everybody takes a picture. I want to jump in, do silly things. Anyways, but you can take a picture if you want. No problem. So you don't need to uh, ask any permission for me to record. Oh, I'm putting it up for the who cares. So you can record me if you want to. You can take pictures and all those things. Just make a joke. That's all. Are we okay down to here? Any questions? Suggestions? Okay. Yeah, so we want to understand how it works, and I'm gonna, now I'm going to give you raw examples of how different constructs, are, what different constructs are to do the same thing. Yes? Or you can ask, if one person doesn't know something, you can be sure that 50% of the class is the same and they're just shy to ask. Okay? And that's my experience. Go. It adds to the number. It counts. Okay. Everything happens in the sequence, one by one in C language, from top to the bottom. Let's walk through. Okay? So what happens over here is this. So what happens over here is this. So if this is my output, oh my god, I drew such a beautiful line. Let me clear it and try to go more straight. Okay, so this is my output, okay? And this is my main. Now my main is a little different. My main has few variables in it. It's not like the other one. So I'll go like this. This is my main, okay? And I have, what do I have? I have CNT, right? What do I have next? I have number of people. And what do I, I have age, correct? And the output is in a very bad place. I'm going to bring the output down here. So output is here. So program runs, says welcome to Seneca. So welcome to Seneca. Then it goes to new line. This is the sign for new line. It means it's going to new line, OK? Then how many guests today, right? So it's going to go how many guests today? Right? And, oh, sorry, before that. I forgot something extremely important. First of all, we have to do this. CNT is initialized to zero. Right? What is number of people? What else? What do I have in age? You put G for garbage. <laughs> you have garbage in it. You don't know what it is. Number of people, what do I have in it? Garbage. OK? Now, how many guests? Let's say in here, user enters two and hits enter. OK? So scanf number of people. So number of people becomes two, correct? Then it comes down. It says, welcome guests number percent t d, which this is going to go to. And then the second one, this one's going to go to. CNT is 0, so CNT plus 1 is 1. So it's going to say, it's going to print, welcome, guest number 1 of 2, right? Then it goes over there, says, how old are you? OK, let's say you're going to say over here 20, OK? Now. It's going to scan an integer that is 20, the user entered. OK? That 20 is going to go into age. So age becomes 20, right? 
Then it comes, is 20 greater than 19? Yes, the first part of the if statement happens. That message is printed. What do you want to, whatever? Comes to the end, CNT, CNT plus one. What does it mean? CNT zero plus one is one. So one goes to CNT, CNT becomes one, goes back up now is one less than two. Exact same thing continues until CNT reaches to number of people and it stops. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Sold. Now, next thing that we have, we have to 315, right? Wow, I can finish the whole thing, the whole semester. That's good. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so next thing, different flavors of while loop, okay? So this one, I'm going to put 0, 3, dash. This is what? What do I call it? Uh, while 3, let's see. Okay, now I call it 3 again. Oh, man, it's 4. Okay, so that's four. Let's put it over there. Now, I want you to listen to me carefully, okay? Let's actually remove everything and just write a CNT over here. And here I'm going to say, Oh, I removed the while loop. While CNT less than 10, okay? Printf percent D comma an integer and print CNT. Okay, what is it going to print? And then in here I'm going to say printf backslash n, new line. So what happens? Make CNT 0, CNT less than 10. Print CNT adds one to it. So essentially it prints 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 9, and then it stops and goes out, correct? So let's take that comma out and just make it space separated. So this is what it does, right? Correct? All right. Now let's take this initialization out and put it here. The result is the same. The difference is that now CNT is being set to zero. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? Hmm? Are we okay with this? Are we, are we, is everybody okay with this structure? Understands what it does. It sets the CNT to zero. Then at every single beginning of every single loop, it checks to see if that is less than 10, prints it, and then adds one to it. Correct? Correct? Yes. Give me line number. Uh, four. Uh-huh. Yeah, what is the difference? And the counter set to zero. Uh -huh. Isn't the difference anything? Or is it Just from the bottom of your heart, know that there is an important difference that you are incapable to understand now. Just know the difference. Know the difference that that is initialization. This is setting. My teacher told me they are very different. I don't know what. Looks exactly the same for me now, but I'll find out later, okay? In OOP 244, next semester. Just remember, okay? Now, you've ever been to Wendy's? Say I want combo number two. When you say combo number two, Burger and a fries and a drink comes. You don't, because you're too lazy, you think too many calories you're going to waste if you actually ask for a thing. So you say combo number two. We have the exact same thing. Instead of writing this, we can say combo number two. We can actually put a combo that does the exact same thing. That is called the for loop. So instead of writing that, you can write four, CNT set to zero, CNT less than 10, and CNT, CNT. <laughs> Bless you, plus one. You. And in here, all 
Okay, now what I'm saying is not a joke. I'm not trying to make up things. These two constructs are identical. Exactly the same. Okay, what does it mean? This happens only once before the for loop. This gets checked every single time before the body of the loop happens. This happens every single time at the very bottom of the loop. Potatoes, potatoes. Okay? No difference. Yes? So it works like a count zero and then you go down? That's the thing. For loop is a little misguiding because the things you are writing over here doesn't happen where they are written. The one that you write happens before the loop. The one that you write over here happens at the end of the every single. So that's why I said it's a combo. Because sometimes you know what your loop is supposed to do. You just want to quickly write the loop and then write its body. You do a for loop. Sometimes you cannot decide when what happens. Then you write a while loop. But any loop that you do happens. You can implement it using a while loop. Are we okay with this? You don't look very satisfied with this. Are you okay with this? <laughs> okay. All right. So, of course, I need to have a printf over here. That cannot be, so it can go to new line. Okay, that printf has nothing to do with the loop. I just want to do something afterward. Right? So, if I run this now, you'll see that it is identical and it happens exactly the same way. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? <clears throat> now, you. I want you to dictate this for me. Give me a second. Uh, so 0, 4, uh, 4, 1.c. OK? What I want you to do, my friend, why did I put 0, 4 again? Let me see if I made a mistake. Uh, open. Yeah, I have to correct the, the, the numbering. It's all going bananas. I have four in a while. I've, everything's everywhere. So this one, yeah. So <clears throat> I'm going to copy this. You tell me how to convert this to a for loop. What do I write? You want me to bring the other for loop up so you can see? OK. So so what do we write here in this part? Um, four. four. And also this part. CNT is set to, set to zero. zero. Now at the end, what do I write? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I made a mistake. OK. CNT is set to CNT plus one, and then we remove the last line because we don't need it anymore. Right. Done. It's identical to the other one, but of course you don't need this initialization anymore because CNT will be set to zero before that, and that's good enough for me. Right? CNT gets zero before the loop begins. Same thing. It is exactly the same thing with no difference. It works exactly the same way. How many guests? Two. How old are you? 89. How old are you? 10. And that's that. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? One. Are we OK? Two. Yes. Can you put in the 80 pools to put up them? What did you say? What? I don't know. Pardon me? OK, that, that's exactly what I was thinking. I, I, would, I would answer yes, but it's like, can I? I don't know where the glass is on my foot. Yes, you can, but people are going to say you're nuts. OK, so yeah, you can. The answer to your question is you can, but it doesn't make sense here. Right. I know exactly what the question is. Now you can ask the question. <laughs> uh, OK. You can, but it doesn't make sense. It's not part of our logic. <clears throat> this is the condition of the repetition. 
This is the condition of drinking beer or not. This says how many people can drink beer. This one says if you individually can drink beer or not. Two different things. These are counting how many guests we have. This is checking every single guest. Two different conditions. Yeah. Are we okay? Yes. No, only one. Or one for like one in the beginning. No, there is no condition. It's only one condition. The, the middle one is the condition. The first one and last one are, are, are statements. One happens once before the loop, and one happens at the very end of the loop. So, can you have more than one? Statement? Yeah, it's crazy, but please, let's not go there. Yeah, I, we can do that. I can put a comma over here and put 15 yeah. different things. Don't. How would you know? Like because semicolon is the one that separates it, oh. not comma. So you can only have two semicolons, but don't listen. Everybody, hold your ears. I want to answer this question. OK. The first one and last one could be comma-separated statements, as many as you want. The, set is what the, 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 the semicolon is the one that, that, that dictates how many. So you can have only two semicolons. And the middle one can only be one, not two. You cannot comma-separate it. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. The, first, the middle one is the condition. First one and last one are number of statements. You can have as many as you want. Any questions down to here? It's 310. I have like things that we are supposed to cover, and I want you to go and study it yourself. It's going to be on the quiz tomorrow, although I didn't teach it. Remember I told you I'm going to ask you questions about things that I don't teach? That's one of the things. So you have lots of studying to do. This is what we have done, if, else, all those stuff. Else, if I didn't talk about, you'll be asked tomorrow, OK, what it is. Read it. Go Google it. What is ELSIF and understand how it works. And switch statement. I didn't talk about it. This one I'm not going to even ask a question about. I'll talk about it later. This one, conditional expression, don't study it. I'll teach you myself. That's a weird thing that you don't need to know. Okay? That's a very efficient type of if that is written to be an if statement with high speed. Okay? What is the meaning of speed? When I say an if statement, an if statement happens in three CPU cycles, that one happens in one CPU cycle, for example, like that. Or an if statement happens in 20 CPU cycles, this one happens in five. Okay? Which means for you, does not make any difference at all. But if you're writing a game that somebody's running, trying to blow somebody's brain out, you need to have if statements properly written so the running is smooth, for example. All right. Anyways, are we okay? Are we okay? Okay, I guess class is dismissed. <laughs> Today I'm being very, very, very...